My son Jonas and I built this Baltic birch plywood desk for my wife, his mom, Amy. And we did it together. The great thing is, is when father and son get together, we have such a great time learning about the tools, learning about the wood, how things work and go together. It was a great experience for both of us. I'm really glad he joined me on this trip and I want you to follow us as we go step by step and how we put these legs on this tabletop. And we're gonna do it right now. Let's take one piece, help me measure. So we're gonna measure 28 and 5 eighths. And we have four legs and we're gonna combine two pieces together to make one leg. We're gonna glue them together. So in that case, if we have four legs and we need two pieces for each leg, how many of these pieces do we need? Eight. Eight, you are correct. All right, so we're gonna use this as a way of measuring everything else. My son Jonas right now is being a really good sport because the only thing he really wants to do at this moment is be on his Nintendo Switch playing video games. But as a loving and doting and caring father, I convinced him to get out into the garage and help me with this project. I feel confident that as he gets older, he will have appreciated the fact that I taught him how to use these tools and exposed him to the wonderful world of woodworking. Or it could backfire. He could resent me, live a life of crime, and deny he ever had a father that loved him. But either way. Okay, we're gonna take this down, okay? At 12 years old, his use of the major power tools is going to be limited, for safety reasons, of course. But in the meantime, we're gonna focus on the art of using wood glue. All right, Jonas, I want you to pop that up. Just gotta get a little strength to it. Got it, pull up. You just gotta pull out. Make it dry. There you go. Alright, so I want you to take a bead, go all the way through. These poplar pieces are one and a half inches wide by three quarter inches deep. You put them together and you make a square. So we're making square legs here. And Jonas is learning the beauty of wood glue combined with the power of spring clamps. The legs are one and a half by one and a half and they're gonna be a half inch offset on the corner here. So if you have a half plus a one and a half, what's that? Two. Two. Over here, same thing. So we have two inches here and two inches here. What's two plus two? Four. Four. All right, so we're going to measure the whole distance here. So we got 46 and 5 eighths. So 46 and 5 eighths minus four is 42 and 5 eighths. So it's going to be 42 and 5 eighths long is the piece. Okay, and then we go this way. So we got two and two. Two plus two is what? Four. Four. Okay, come over here. And that is right on 18, 18 inches. So 18 minus four is what? 14. 14, so go 14 deep. So the pieces between the legs are gonna be 42 and 5 eighths by 14 deep. And those are the measurements of the skirt that we're gonna cut. You ready to do it, Jonas? <laughs> so basically what I was describing there was the length of the skirt pieces, not including the width of the legs. As you can see, this is my makeshift miter saw station. Someday I will be building my very own custom miter saw station, but for the meantime, it goes on top of my workbench, and I have these little makeshift stop blocks that I put up. It works really well for now, but for the convenience of having to set it up and put it down, a miter saw station is gonna be a sweet, sweet project. By the way, I'll have a video on that one for sure. I'm going to be using my new circle cutting jig to create some decorative circles between the legs at the very ends of the desk. In order to do this, I'm taking two seven and quarter inch wide poplar boards, cutting them in 21 inch pieces, and then gluing them together. I've never done anything quite like this before, but I imagine it in my head, I drew it on a piece of paper, and when I looked at it, I thought, hey, this might just work. I think it's gonna look really cool, unique, and it's gonna be my own design. So, how could it go wrong? Jonas, these pieces are all dried and ready for the planer, okay? 
These pieces right here, this is going to be the bottom of the legs because the legs is going to be a rectangle, squarish type of thing. The problem is, is we need two more pieces of these. We forgot to cut two. So we're going to cut two more of these and then we're going to glue these together. Once those are dry, then we can run those through the planer. What do you think? Good. But before we do that, let's get these out of these clamps because they're all dry. Since I'm not using a cut list and I came maybe a little unprepared, I tend to make these kind of mistakes. But with these final pieces out of the clamps and our leftover straight pieces cut, we are ready to move forward. The glued up pieces had some remaining glue squeeze out and potentially some proudness at the seams, so we ran them through the planer. I showed Jonas how to use the planer and he went from nothing to novice in no time flat. Welcome to my circle jig. I made this just the other day and I made a video all about it. Check it out, I think you'll really find it interesting and helpful. I was really excited to teach and show Jonas how to use the router, but I may have chose a tool that's just a little too much for him to handle at this age. But in retrospect, I should have been more prepared to have him handle this tool. The noise was overwhelming for him and I forgot to give him earplugs in the beginning. I did get him some later, but because of the loud noise, it really kind of rattled him a little bit. And continuing my bad dad streak, I forgot to give him eye protection, so I gave him mine. The next day, I went down to Home Depot and bought him his own. So rest assured, you can hold your comments regarding this topic. So I relieved my traumatized son of his duties and I said, hey, you know what? I'll handle this from here. I'll finish the routing job. And what I did to one, of course, I did to another. I wanted these rings to be about two inches in width, so I adjusted my circle jig two and a half inches from the initial starting point. I added a half inch to accommodate for the actual width of the router bit. This is an inside diameter cut, not an outside diameter cut like before. So round and round the router goes in a perfect circle. Why you ask? Because of my awesome circle cutting jig, which you gotta check the video out about. Anyways. What I did to one, of course, I did to the other. Once I had all the pieces cut and ready to go, I used DAP plastic all-purpose wood filler in the color of white to fill all the nooks and crannies. There weren't very many, but just a few had to be touched up. My son Jonas was there to help me out. He just pops in once in a while, doesn't like to stay for the whole time, but I'll take what I can get. At this point in the build, I think there's a conversation that needs to be had. With Jonas by my side during this build, I had to ask myself the important question, is sanding child abuse? I know it's been asked before, but I'm just gonna touch on it for a moment right here. Well, if you're talking about taking a low grit sandpaper to a random orbital sander to the skin of your child, I think we can all agree that's debatable. But to give your child a bunch of unsanded wood and say, hey, I'll be back in countless hours after you sand this down to three different grits all the way to 220 or 240? Uh, yeah, we've all been there before. To do that to a kid, child abuse, no question. So with that in mind, I went ahead and did the sanding. I let Jonas slide on this one. We'll wait till he gets a little older. I don't want CPS showing up on my doorstep. Now clearly I am doing most of the work here, but I am having Jonas come out and become used to some of the tools. Just using them, learning how they work, feeling more comfortable when he's got them in his hands and not be so afraid of the noise and the power. There you go. Good there job, you go. You see, when I was a kid, I was raised around no tools. My dad was not a handy guy. He wasn't a Mr. Fix-It. He was a small business owner and doing stuff around the house was not his forte. So growing up, I kind of wish I had a little more exposure to that kind of stuff because now as an adult, I figured I didn't really know how to do anything and I had to teach myself everything that you see me doing in my videos. Of course, I got to give some credit to YouTube. YouTube has really helped me out and learn how to do these types of things. So I guess the question remains, am I a candidate for father of the year or am I gonna be causing my son some type of trauma later in life because I subtly and forcefully got him out into the garage to be exposed to this kind of stuff? Good dad or bad dad, that ultimately is the question. If you have any tips on how to get kids into woodworking, let me know. Put it in the comments section. Love to hear from you.
I'm assembling all these pieces with dowels, 3 8 inch and half inch, depending on the thickness of the boards. And I'm using my extra wide doweling jig. I love this thing. It drills holes so straight, so clean, so nice. If you're interested in any of the tools you see me use on this project, make sure you click on the video description where I have affiliate links to Amazon where you can purchase all the things that I use. So I clamped this piece in my self-centering dowel jig, but when it was in the jig, it went askew and I didn't realize it because I was looking at the jig and not the, not the post. And that's what happened. So in order to fix this problem, I put the dowel in there and glued it in. Now I'm just gonna flush cut it off basically starting with a brand new surface and re-drill. Easy solution for a simple problem. Woodworkers make mistakes all of the time, and I am no exception. But what separates the great woodworkers from everybody else is can you fix your mistakes and how good can you fix them? Now, I'm no expert woodworker, but I make plenty of mistakes, so I get plenty of practice fixing them. I'm attaching the skirt of the desk to the desk top by using dowels. So here, I'm drilling holes for those dowels in the skirt pieces. Getting the dowel holes to line up just perfectly between the skirt and the desk top can be a bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna show you a really cool way to do this. So stay tuned, keep watching. Assembling the pieces at this point was pretty simple and straightforward, but the key important thing is to make it all square, and having these Duratec positioning squares available were awesome. Now, I only have them in the larger size. It would have been nice to have some smaller size ones for some of the tighter spots, but overall, it turned out exactly square like I needed. And once this glue was dry, it was ready to paint. I use Poplar because it's paint grade wood. Jonas was my helper with this part of the project. We put two coats of white paint all over this thing. If you're wondering what kind of white I used, I don't know, I used white. There's a million, Navajo, eggshell, either way it was, it was white. Whenever painting furniture projects, it's important that you seal the paint, otherwise it can scuff off very easily when it rubs up against something. So for this project, I used General Finish's water-based top coat, high performance satin. This is an amazing finish that I use. I could use it for the desktop too, but I just went with the lacquer instead. Regardless, if you wanna try the stuff, click the video description, purchase it. The reason why I went with this finish is because the reviews that I read said it didn't turn the white yellow. And sometimes you'll find that with finishes over white paint. Even though the can says it may yellow the whiteness, I didn't find this to be a problem. I use it on a test piece, worked great. I installed these furniture glides so that the feet wouldn't touch the floor, preventing any scuffing as well. Also, they're great for leveling in case one of your legs is shorter or longer than the other. Securing the desk skirt to the desk top with dowels is where things get interesting, so follow along. First, cover all of your dowel holes with painter's tape, making sure the edges of the tape stick past the skirt. Then take a ballpoint pen and color over those holes. Now, something that I learned was that when you take a pen over the tape over the wood, it leaves these silver-like marks on the other side of the tape so that you can actually see the hole. I don't know if this is because it's poplar or do with any wood, but it worked, and I kind of just stumbled upon it. Then take the skirt and carefully place it exactly where you want it on the desk bottom. Using your painter's tape, tape down the tape so the opposing sides of the tape are sticking to each other. Make sure you do this both on the outside and the inside of the skirt. Then carefully remove the desk skirt from the desk top. This might take a little elbow grease. What you'll find are easily identifiable circles exactly where you need to drill for the dowel holes. Then take an awl or a hole punch and punch the center of all of those circles. Now you can remove the tape and drill the holes where all the dowels are supposed to go. It should line up just perfectly. It's as simple as that. Now for full disclosure, I will admit there were a few dowels that were just a hair off. All I did was come back with my drill, did a little swirly action in the hole, and they fit just fine. From here on out, it's a pretty simple yet incredibly stressful glue up until you're done. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I hate large glue ups, but it's a necessary evil. And in the heat of the moment, I realized I didn't have anything to put between the tabletop and the pad of the clamp. 
so I improvised and used paper towels. This proved to be a horrible idea, which took off part of the finish. Anyways, when it was all said and done, I just put another lacquer coat on the top and it worked out just fine. If you're interested in a simple five-step process to build a circle cutting jig, click on the video on the right hand side. And if you want to see how I built this desktop, click on the video on the left. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell for all notifications. This is Dude Sawdust, and I'll see you on the next video.